though. You knew bees were coming. Um, it, it's interesting that I think there was actually a fair amount of bees at this tournament, and, and it worked out to be a pretty effective medical. So you know, if bees is a good medical, of course Jimmy's going to do well at a tournament. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm super uh, stoked to watch this because I did not get to watch the stream last night. Come on, more people got to watch Twitch. What was I missing? I was sleeping on that, and I regret it. Well, the game has started. Uh, Jimmy will be going first. Uh, he's opened up with the Tapu Lele and the active. Probably the worst place for it because it never gets a chance to be in your hand, and of course, activate right. one well, attack. And he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to bench two prizes unless he absolutely has to. That Tapu Lele is only in there if he's like desperate for the draw. So. He's filled with the sorrow, I'm sure. But he discarded two uh, Pokemon right off the bat. And yep. yeah, out comes the friendly dice to help us keep track of the most important thing in his discard. Yeah, those are so essential to make sure we can keep a count on those. Uh, really easy to see exactly how much those Vespicons will be doing later in the game. Uh, setting up quite nicely. He gets a combi out, of course, with the, the Pokemon in the discard. Gets a Shaman out for some setup as well. Following with another combi, so his bench... Uh, looking pretty plentiful, the farewell letter as well. Uh, just another card in the hand. He's gone through a good amount of his deck already, uh, getting that damage count up. He is staring down the terrifying Sudawoodoo and uh, Buzzwall, the baby Buzzwall, as it's been popularly known. Um, but a big Juniper there. Uh, more Pokemon in the discard, uh, maybe, or just a ton of items. Uh, we didn't yeah, see a I mean, ton he, of the he only flashed that for a second. It seemed like it was a lot of trainers and not a lot of Pokemon. Yeah, we didn't see the dice turn, so no benefit to him there, but I think he's pretty comfortable in this setup right now. Uh, knows he just wants to be hitting those numbers as yeah, soon as turn two. Comes over to James, who's uh, going to get his Brooklet Hill down. That's what you like to see turn one when you're playing one of these fighting type decks. Can pull that out. Yeah. Um, what do, we, what do we think he's having a hunt for? I, you know, I, I assume he's looking for the Buzzwell GX. I assume the strategy in this game is he's going to start jet punching and put pressure on Jimmy to find evolutions for Vespaquins. Vespaquin only has 90 hit points. So, I mean, even if you land a jet punch on one, you're, you know, you're always within at least three jet punches. Uh, he does have a couple of options in there, but he only plays that single uh, Buzzwell GX. He has gone for the split, of course, with the Landorus EX as well, way back from Boundaries Crossed. That's, uh, that's quite something. 29 uh, Pokemon in the Jimmy O'Brien's deck. Uh, I think that's considered the, the kind of classic amount at this point for, for uh, Pokemon in a Vespaquin deck. Uh, I recognize for many players at home, you know, they, they come from this modality of like 20 Pokemon, 20 trainers, 20 energies. It was like the 1.0 of deck building logic. And, and they've since seen it evolve to running a lot of trainers and generally few Pokemon and generally a small amount of energy. I mean, James is only running 11 Pokemon. Vespaquin, its attack is fueled by the number of Pokemon in the discard. He is going to be uh, jettisoning a ton of Pokemon. Here yeah. comes the Battle Compressor. Yeah, Jimmy's got Pokemon to spare. We do see James while he's in there actually go for the Landorus. Uh, I was talking to Michael actually before this game came on about how he's gone for that, that split of Landorus and Buzzwall. And it's nice that he pulls out the Landorus, he may have seen Jimmy's game or, or know a little bit about this deck. And he is going to have to be a little bit wary of that Mew EX. Uh, so with that in mind, you know, keep yeah. it safe from getting hit for weakness. The Landorus having a water type weakness, which isn't going to be such a problem. That Pokemon count though, after the compressor, all the way up to, is that 8 or 9? 9. 9. So that's, uh, you're doing the damage you need right there. That's, that's a whole heap of damage. Yeah, I, I, just so the viewers at home realize, uh, I, I always opt for the, the seat closest to the monitor because I'm old and I reap that benefit, so so we all have to struggle equally to see what's going on on the screen. I think it's fair. I think, I think I've got a few That's years on you. Fair. That's very fair. A age before beauty. Oh, thank you, Brent. You're there so, you go. So kind. Uh, you know, it's it's tough. I, I recognize. Maybe I should have ceded my seat to Trainer Chip. You guys are going to get a lot of witticisms on this uh, on this uh, particular stream it's today. It's going to be wild. We're up to ten in that Pokemon count for Vespaquen. There's the Vespaquen and another combi. Uh, nice right. full bench for Jimmy and another. And it's time to Juniper. Another Pokemon going in with the Juniper as well. He's rolled the dice yeah. up to 11. Now. Yeah, now his bench is full. He's not going to be able to shame him to draw more cards. He'd like to find a way to uh, retreat the Tapu Lele and get moving. Yep, he gets another Vespaquan into play. Uh, it would be nice to just take the knockout on there immediately. Grabs finds the, the float stone, stone. Finds the DCE. There it He's is. He's getting going. Yep, that's exactly what he needed. He can bench again next turn, but Jimmy O'Brien taking the first prize of this game. and Landorus is... Uh, 
It's going to need a couple of turns to work its way through a Vespaquam. You know, I've noticed Jimmy does this every game. He tilts those bottom two prizes sideways. Well, we actually, he had it on yesterday. Yeah, did, uh, did we, we have asked, an analysis there? Yeah. So I went and asked, I said, hey, it's, is there like a, a prize penalty in play or anything? And no, it's actually just personal preference. Yeah, that's his thing. Yeah. I don't understand exactly what that thing symbolizes, but it's a, it is his thing. I think maybe they're tilted kind of towards him. So he's on that final furlong for victory. He can pick them up quicker. Yeah, well, I, it's interesting. So la, la, yesterday, did he do the same thing where he doesn't take those prizes? Yeah, yeah he leaves those for last. He leaves those, he leaves those for last. That is fascinating and somewhat crazy. Well, we're on sleeve analysis. Uh, you know, we just have to take a moment to appreciate James's. Uh, <laughs> do blend in a little bit, but very nice nonetheless. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I also appreciate how they both dressed to uh, match the playmat. That was oh, very, very, very wise. thoughtful. While we've been talking, though, there has been the dance. The Prism Star put into play for James, so going to be able right. to try and um, build up a little more damage that way. Uh, one of those new additions, we've seen people play with, with other kind of damage buffs that they've been trying yeah. to get through. Uh, that's but... generally speaking, with the exception of the Shaman and the Tapu Lele, uh, and, and the Mew EX, if the Mew EX makes an appearance, yeah, the, his choice bands are going to be uh, somewhat useless. Right. Uh, so, at least for killing Vespaquins. And so, he's looking for ways to be able to, at the very least, two shot. If he could find some strong energies, he could improve uh, his damage output even a little more than that. Yeah, that'd be really nice if he can find those strong energies, but. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just don't run into them. He does have a, a oh, plethora of he, he, find, he finds the muscle band. That's going to put him at 70. So if he'd been able to find a strong energy, he would have been able to one-shot the active. Ugh, just, while just chipping not the quite bench. there. Yeah. It's nice, though, being able to, to do that much with just a simple uh, addition. You know, just the Diancy. You were going to be playing a muscle band or a choice band anyway, just in right. case you run into the single prize. Right. So, you know, making a change. Uh, yeah. A little bit more yeah, this, than Reggie Rock. This field blower play is a big play here because... It helps you, uh, uh, getting that muscle band off the board is going to keep him from being able to take one shots unless he has multiple energy attachments. Right, we do see the choice band, which will be valuable for Jimmy, attached to his Vespaquen there. Uh, that doesn't he's, quite get he's him there, Philanderous. Yeah, he's right not there. there yet. Uh, needs to find another way to get that, uh, that discard pile just bumped up. Uh, wait, I see a versus secret in Jimmy's hand. If he junipers, he's probably going to get the piece he needs. Yeah, he's just got to be, just got to be you, smart. You can't about imagine it. with such a turbo engine like that, he's not going to be able to find his way there. There's the seeker. We see Juniper brought to the front, and there it is—the Shaman in the hand as well. He's up to 14 Pokemon, 140 starting damage plus the Choice Band. That's 170. He's there. Uh, Jimmy has just gone off in the first two turns. I, mean, I, I think having 14 uh, Pokemon in the discard is uh, uh, really sending a message. Yeah, well, he is going to be uh, going and, back and he's got through. <laughs> there's three Vespaquins out. Yeah, but look how many cards are in the deck. There's, there's nothing in there. It's... Yeah. But, I mean, that, that's the miracle of these uh, compressor engines, right? I mean, I, I think I, I was explaining to a kind of first-time Pokemon player, this is his first regional ever, just uh, during the last round while, while Chip and Michael were streaming, kind of, how decks work, then how to build a synergistic deck. And I think the miracle of these Battle Compressor-based decks is, you know, you're discarding Pokemon that fuel your attack. And this is how Night March and Vest can work. And you're thinning your deck, so every card you draw has a higher probability of being the cards you need to win. Right. So you get, you get kind of two perks, and, uh, you know, that, that's nearly overpowering. Well, the engines put Jimmy up three prizes already, uh, taking the knockout there on that Lander CX. He's just got all the pieces he needs. I mean, yeah, he's going to be slowed down a bit, taking on this singular buzzwall right now. Uh, that's going to be really nice for him. You know, just easy to knock those out. Doesn't really have to reach for it right now. Well, and it's, and it's he has a best win for every prize. Because there was a uh, uh, because he was able to take two prizes there. He's. He's below four prizes, so the baby Buzzwool can't swing for 120. Yep, that sledgehammer. It's not able to, uh, yeah, he uh, can't use the sledgehammer attack. I've talked to a few players about it, actually, and they say, you know, how do you fare against uh, the baby Buzzwool? And a lot of people just say, well, you just don't give them the four prize option. It's simply put, right. you take a single right. prize early doors, and then you just take an EX or, or GX out of play, and you've completely negated the uh, attack sledgehammer. Right, right. I mean, e you know, easy to say. 
in, in practice, probably a little bit trickier, but because uh, James started the Sudowoodo and Jimmy was able to really hit the turbo button, right. it, it made all the difference. Well, he didn't need to hit it. I mean, Sudowoodo is one of those easier ones to knock out from there. Yeah. So, you know, probably pretty pleased when he saw that one come down. Exactly. Did there's there's, there's probably the not, not e there's no easier KOs to be taken in James' deck. No, I think that is that is the lowest hit point. Yeah. Uh, maybe Oracorio, is that slightly lower? No, it's 90. Yeah. Or Sudowoodo 100? Sudowoodo is 100, 100, so yeah, yeah Oracorio, yeah. that's 90. So, would have, been, would have been nice. I mean, Jimmy's really hit everything. Yeah, and, and Jimmy's been able to, like, really smoothly draw through his deck without setting up Zoroarks. And he, he runs that 4-4 four, four Zoroark line. It's fighting weak. You know, I, I think his preference is to not bench it if he doesn't need to. He hasn't needed to. He's completely left it at home, thrown it all in the discard, and all of those Zoroarks used to being, uh, you know, used for trades. Right. Why trade? You can just put it in there... Uh, use right. it for the damage that you need. Right. Uh, that's uh, he's he's been able to draw through his deck with no problems. And you know, I mean, trade is the kind of thing that has a a really good synergy in this deck, in that you can just discard Pokemon and then right. draw more cards. Uh, so so it's fueling that kind of deadly combo of thinning your deck and giving you the engine. Well, James will get on the board there. Uh, has decided to finally that weaken Vesperquent from earlier. Will be taken out by the Sledgehammer on this active Buzzwall. This, the, uh, just the baby one, not the GX that we're used to right. seeing. Um, but it, it's not safe. I mean, as long as the energies keep coming for Jimmy here, uh, he's going to be able to, to keep on going. If there was a fight back that involved a lot of jet punches, maybe, it wouldn't be an option right now as Mr. Mime takes the field for Jimmy. So he's only going to be able to attack the active. Those benches are safe. And I think this shows as we head towards game two, you know, what an uphill battle James is going to have. You know, if he wants to be weakening up these combis, these Vesperquents with Jet Punch uh, from Buzzwall or the equivalent from Landra CX, uh, the Hammerhead, he's going to struggle as soon as the Mr. Mime comes out. Uh, you got to imagine James is going to scoop it up in a second. Yeah, there, there's really... Not too many other options. The powered up Buzzwall on the bench right. uh, that was ready to try and do a little more damage is Lysander up, taken okay. out of play. He's trying to hold off benching another GX so he can force Jimmy to play the seven prize game, but he just doesn't have enough gas to take a knockout this turn if he's just going to let him go knocking out Pokemon. Well, it goes to the Oracorio. Oh, the Oracorio is a great play. Yeah, he can really with, try. With 16 Pokemon in the discard, He's going to be able to take a double knockout here on two Vespaquins. Yeah, this Oracorio swings this, this it around. This the game. Uh, this gets really nasty really quickly, actually. I uh, assume he's got the energy in hand as well because he was uh, uh, willing to discard that energy. Yeah, he must have something ready to go for it. Uh, so. Oh, no, he, he played a letter to get those energies. I'm sorry. Ah, I see it on the top of the discard. Uh, uh, so there it goes. That's bad commentating. Uh, happens to the best of us. And me. And oh uh, my God! The jokes just keep coming. People, oh. this is this is why you love this stream. Uh, well, anyway, somebody tell Ninja's viewers the funny people are over here. <laughs> uh, I've never I've never even tried Fortnite. I don't even know what it's about. Yeah, I mean, I have a sixth grader, so my sixth grader is basically all in on Fortnite and all in on Ninja. I told him he should come co try commentate the stream with us because we have 400 viewers and. And he was like, Ninja has 100,000 right now. Why would I start 400? But is he in sunny Roanoke, Virginia? Exactly. Exactly. I said, hey, Ninja has to start somewhere. They do. They all do. Yeah. Uh, we do see, I think it's the, the math now, as he leans over the table, uh, looking over the spectacles, making sure he gets those counts correct. Uh, trying to think, maximize his knockouts. It does bring up the Mr. Mime into the active. Uh, yeah, nice so, so yeah, I think what he's going to do here is he's going to double knock out both the Vespaquins and try to strand the Mr. Mime in the active. Right. Here we go. Counts are on. Oh. He's got one left? Yeah. Yep, there it is. So those are the knockouts. Those Vespaquins are gone. Yeah, wow. There it is. 
This game's much closer now that Orokorio coming through for James, uh, being able to take advantage of this vast amount of prizes in the discard. If you were thinking you had the worst commentators going on, I'm sure if Trainer Chip had been here, he would have said Orokorio is coming hours and hours ago. Well, uh, uh, much like you guys, much like Jimmy, that Orokorio came out of nowhere for us. That's a big play. That's a huge play. And it basically means now uh, that Jimmy's forced to uh, you know, at least switch it out because he can just keep Supernatural dancing. He is now at 20 Pokemon in the discard. Yeah, yeah I mean... Uh, uh, he literally just added four with the Vespaquen combi, Vespaquen combi. And, and now, you know, it's so easy to pick up knockouts on these EXs and GXs. Anything more, I mean, he takes one of these, he leaves it with a mere Shaman and a, a Mr. Mime, for example. Uh, you can't really even go after him with the energy drive. It's just going to be a little bit too long. Uh, Jimmy computer searching you know, I, I think, I think three of his cards. If, if I was Jimmy, I think the question is how many uh, Pokemon are in James's discard. His question is can he grab Mew and DCE and then copy Supernatural Dance back at James? Well, you have to, to hope it wasn't Corio. prized. He did computer search. We didn't get to see what he took. He's going to grab a Guzma. So we haven't yeah. seen the Mew. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, tucked away. There yeah, it is. Mew DCE. There's the Guzma. So it's into the active. He can, he can probably tidy this up. Or he can at least get very, very close. Uh, no, he, uh, he's forced to just copy Energy Drive. He doesn't have the... Uh... No, he, he's copying yeah. Yeah. how many are in his opponent's discard. So he doesn't get to take advantage of right, the... Right, well, I think all he did was copy Energy Drive because there were not enough Pokemon in the discard yeah. to be able to kill the Oricorio. So he, he knew it was coming. James showed that he was able to retreat his Pokemon, and Jimmy said, that's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> on I, to the next game. I see the Oricorio is on the way there. So uh, do we think Jimmy's going to have to play around that again? There's really honestly not an option to play around Oricorio. Well, I, I, think, I, I, I think much like Night March... You can always play around the Oracori if you know it's coming, and you're definitely going to see Jimmy change his strategy to adapt to that in this next game. But you're right. I mean, I think Oracori was such a hard counter because with Vespaquin, you only do 10 damage for discarded Pokemon versus Night March. Like, Night Marchers, I think the conventional wisdom is you can always play around Oracori because if you only discard 8 Night Marchers and you're hitting for 160 and you throw a Muscle Band on, you're hitting for one, or a Choice Band on, you're hitting for 190, that's good damage output, and he can't double knockout a Pumpkaboo and a Joltik, or knock out two uh, uh, Pumpkaboos. But with Vespaquin, you just have to discard a lot of Pokemon. Yeah, that is your only option, is to fill that discard. Yeah, so, yeah uh, I mean, every, every 10 points of damage that you do is 10 points of damage they can do with the Oricorio. you got to have a plan for that. And they can put it wherever they want. They don't have to yeah. be putting it down just on the active like a, like a Vespaquin would. Yeah, it, it really well, cer certainly Jimmy's it. primary strategy is going to be Forcing James to prize the Oracorio. <laughs> As I say, if he can, you know, with, with the cut, try and weave that in there. I don't condone shuffling of that like, that ilk. Good yeah. thorough shuffles from all players involved, please. You know, good. Uh, you good know, I've noticed, I've noticed Jimmy do this before. This kind of like underhand uh, rifle is a... It seems like it does a good job shuffling. Uh, for me, frankly, I don't quite even understand the mechanics of how he does it. It's a it's a unorthodox technique. But does it, that. does it sufficiently randomize the cards? Yeah, I mean, it seems like he's 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 you know kind of smashing the decks together. It seems pretty well shuffled to me. It's just the uh, the weird uh, unorthodox hand technique is uh, disturbing to me. Well, James isn't convinced. He's having a little shuffle of his own of Jimmy's yeah. deck. So yeah, that's how James is shuffling it. I mean, my kids have small hands, so they're like when they first started playing Pokemon, they couldn't shuffle at all, and that was how I taught them to shuffle. They like drop the two decks on top of each other. And yeah, the mass shuffle. That's, yeah, that's yeah. My go-to. That's a classic, right? But yeah, uh, you know, uh, um, I'm always surprised when people can do that thing sideways. Because uh, it seems like you don't have gravity assisting you. Why would you not, you know, reap the benefits of gravity? All right, they're setting up. Yeah, they, they are. Jimmy has uh, tilted his uh, uh, last two prizes at a 45-degree angle. Well, we've got the key components both out in the active to start. The Oracorio, which we talked about being very, very essential for James, as it was in the last game, is right there in the active. So it's uh, not going to be able to come in late when there's... 19, 20 Pokemon in the discard for Jimmy. 
It's going to have to try and fight now. And James, you know, probably wants to try and find a way to conserve that, but I don't think he has one, really, apart he, from... He has, a, he has a rescue stretcher. Right. This is the quality commentary people are looking for. The key thing you need to know right now is that Orikuri is going to die in a hot second, but it's going to be okay. James does not mind. He has the stretcher. He needs that stretcher. <laughs> He's got to get the stretcher at the right time, though. I mean, that's the problem. What if he draws the rescue stretcher now and he has to juniper right. it away? Right. It, it really changes the way he plays his hands because... And you know what's interesting is I don't think he worries about that too much because he plays four Karinas and four Seekers, so he has a way to grab items from his deck. As long as he didn't prize the stretcher, this can go down no problem, and then he can just at any moment, Karina, grab the stretcher, grab the Orkor, if he has an energy in hand, he's off to the races. Yeah, that's, that's right. something he's going to need to be doing late in the game. Uh, we do see the Mew given the float stone, so probably not going to be left up there too long. Uh, probably wants to save it till it can attack in something like a buzzwall. Has, uh, does it have to be the Zerua left in the active at the end of this turn? Uh, maybe trying to bait James into knocking it out, just to get it in the discard. Yeah, he did not have the uh, super turbo turn one that he had uh, last game. Oh, again, James is going to be able to Brooklyn Hill, uh, heading on into that deck. Looking for one of those fighting Pokemon or water Pokemon if they're in there. I uh, don't think there's any, but just in case there was, the option is open to him. Yeah, I, I think you can expect Jimmy to use Brooklyn Hill every turn that it's out there because uh, all these players like to look at their decks. I mean, you're always trying to think about what's prized, what resources do I have available for this matchup, what's my strategy supposed to be, and, and I think it's very comforting for uh, uh, a player to be, feel like they could pick up their deck once a turn and just look at it. Yeah, it's actually one of the nicest mechanics of Brooklyn Hill, of course, because your deck is uh, secret information, and you can't guarantee that they are guaranteed to fail it. You can just say, oh, I'm looking for one to see if it's in there. And, right. uh, I, I think we talked on. about this a little bit yesterday, but I think one of the things that, that uh, um, newer players in the game, and even players who aren't so new, are always talking about is how at the top tiers of the game, these guys are figuring out their prizes early and have a strategy for that. The opportunity to do kind of random deck searches and check for cards as you let your strategy evolve over the course of the game uh, makes a big difference. Yep, well, the Landers is got with the Brooklyn Hill. Uh, he is going to play a Guzma to get that into the active. Uh, big thing here, it takes the knockout on the combi. Uh, the Zorok is safe, though, because of that Mr. Mime. Uh, it's Mew EX. We talked about it a little bit earlier. The fact is, Mew EX isn't hitting a Landorus for super effective damage. So, you know what? It's probably a better pick right now. And, and the options to copy, kind of limited. Oh, he attaches to the Zoroark. Uh, I think that speaks to the fact that he's probably going to have to Juniper in a second, and he thought, I, I choose not to throw this DCE away. Yeah, that's a, a pretty essential card. A uh, clear indication that this strategy yeah, is going to be Zoroark different. Attacking with Zoroark is not what he's trying to do. Uh, he's probably going to grab a Shaman here. He thinned his hand out by attaching the DCE. And he's going to push a little harder because he did not have the turn one he wanted to, and uh, so it's time to, uh, time to get going. Yeah, he really needs to push on in this one. Another good look through the deck. Is he grabbing a Shaman or a Lele? He's got I think that, that'll be a testament to uh, how much faith he has in, his, uh, in the cards he has in hand. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be, that'll be quite telling. Uh, he does actually go for the Zoroark, oh, so the neither Zoroark. of the above. So he probably has the supporter in hand. He's going to trade. Oh, he's got the Lele in hand. Yep, he's... Uh, Grabs a Guzma, and he's going to slaughter the... Uh, the poor Oracorio. Force it to be brought back by Rescue Stretcher a little bit later. Now he needs to bench another Pokemon to be able to take the knockout, right? Uh, I yeah. think so. Yeah, the Oracorio's got 90 hit points. Oh. No? I guess there uh, is it is it dark week or is it psychic week? That would be the uh, the kicker there. And you know weakness. what? We don't have you on the engineering team, so that Oricorio card is not coming up like clockwork. Hits him! Hits him for the knockout. That's the key thing right there. Uh, are, are there terrible things you want to say about the engineering team right now? No, not at all, actually. Oh my goodness! It's a missed Very. opportunity. Very pleasant. Confirmation: <laughs> It is weak to dark. Oh. There it is. I am sure you people I in the was, chat I was like are just calling us out right oh, now. I thought it was Psychic like Week. I thought the Mew could uh, KO it, and that was like part of the strategy here. So that's what I get. I'm sure you people on the chat are saying, my God, I could do a better job commentating. And i got to tell you, 
we actually knew all of that, and we didn't say it because we wanted to give you guys the opportunity to have something suspense. to do on chat. A little bit of suspense. Yeah, we don't want to get anybody uh, the only, the only not feeling fulfilled. I have right now is he has left a Zorark in the active against a lot of fighting type Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, now he, I know that is weak to fight. He would love to find a strong and a choice band here and KO the Zorark. He'd have a lot invested in the Landorus, but uh, Jimmy's board state is not good right now. No, I mean, you've got a Mew EX, which isn't hitting for weaknesses. And really, all he could do is copy Energy Drive with that Mew, given what's on the board right now. And an Energy Drive versus uh, Landorus with two Stroms is not going to get him where he wants to be. Then he's an Energy Attachment away from Land's Judgment, KOing the Mew, and the board state's a disaster. He wouldn't even attack with the Mew, he'd attack with the Tapu Lele, because it just doesn't help. Yeah, it's... Uh... Something that he's going to need to, to try and think of his way out. But, you know, what are we on? Turn two, turn three. How many combis are you seeing? Zero. Yeah. There's yeah. none in play. Uh, Jimmy's board state has just evolved glacially. He had a combi for a while. Yeah. And then it got knocked out. Well, uh, yeah, what, gonna... What's interesting is he, he, he really invested a lot of resources in going after that Oricorio. Uh, I mean, the, the Tapu Lele for Guzma instead of Tapu Lele for Juniper and trying to really continue to evolve his board state uh, appears to have cost him a bit. And, and it's an interesting choice. I mean, what we know here on stream that he does not know is James has the rescue stretcher and the Oracoro is coming back. At so some point. Jimmy is, is thinking, you know, I, I, now I have a little bit of a window to evolve my board state. But uh, uh, frankly, he's not going to be able to make that big comeback, it would seem. It looks a little dicey. Right. He is going to uh, go for the... Seeker for Juniper. Combi's just put in there. Not even not even benched. Yeah. He's he like, let's go. Yeah, he needs to, to get through more of his deck a little bit quicker now. Um, Zoroark's just not going to be able to get there on this Landorus right now. So yeah, and, and it's another turn where he's probably going to lose Zoroark next time around. I assume Jimmy is uh, somewhat confident... Like, he's probably aware of the possibility that James has for having a rescue stretch or some ability to bring back a Pokemon, but I think he also knows that if he doesn't start KOing stuff, the game's just going to get away from him. Yeah, I mean, you look at his board and, and yeah. literally... I mean, the Zoroark's of, going down next turn. Of those top-line Pokemon, the Vespaquen and the Zoroark, you know, they're both 4-4 four, four lines, and he doesn't have much of it. He has one Zoroark to show for it. Yeah. Which just, once that goes down next turn, you're in trouble. Yeah, so the good news for Jimmy is, God forbid James had been able to find the strong and the choice last turn and had one-shotted that Zoroark, I mean, he either would have had to pass or he would have had to attach one of his precious DCs to the Tapu Lele to energy drive the Landorus, and it wouldn't have been a knockout. Um, here, he's going to be able to attack with the Zoroark again this turn, so he can bench a bunch of combis, attack with the Zoroark, benching Full the combis the ups his damage, and he doesn't take the knockout, but you know, at least he's getting uh, damage on the field and setting up the combis as opposed to just passing and you know watching uh, James hammer as a Pokemon. And, and James will have the choice of, you know, do I want to Guzma up this combi and kill it, or do I want to KO the uh, Zoroark? Jimmy's able to get two combis down. That's got to help him feel good because he's like, okay, it's not going to be a double KO this turn. He's, you know, he's not going to be able to uh, get them both. I will have a best win next turn. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, he's giving up those prizes to, to do that. I don't see why yeah. James, you know, he could gun for the combis, that'd be great. But he also just has that juicy two-prize knockout left in the active for him right now. And you've got to say, that looks kind of tempting. Uh, the only thing he could do nicely with the combis would be if he managed to pull one up with the Guzmas. You know, it'd be right. interesting just to leave him with that potential one Vespaquen. Um, but you also got to remember, you know, the number of prizes is essential in this game. Hundred hundred and twenty off the uh, copy of the riotous beating there from Mew. Uh, didn't want to leave that Zoroark right. in the active to take the hit, but you know, right? Didn't, didn't want to give away option. two prizes. Not right now, no. Yeah, but in the future. It's uh, interesting. Uh, 
Now James is James is not benching Buzzwolves because he's scared of the Mew as well. Oh, he's got to wait for that Mew to be cleared out. Um, but he's he's benching the baby Buzzwolves tentatively. Um, oh, yeah. Should be a should be a possibility for James to just start knocking things out soon. You know, we we don't know what he has in way of bringing that Zoroark up to the front. Uh, he is powering up from the baby Buzzwolves with a strong energy, not the regular fighting. So both of them will be good to start sledgehammering as soon as possible. Really, not many cards in the discard for James. He's, he's managed to play everything. That comes to him, play it down, use it. Letters for two more energies. Make sure that hand's nice and full, probably an indication of uh, what he may be drawing as the supporter. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I suspect what he's trying to do is just thin out his deck to improve his draws a little bit. Well, he only took one, takes one energy off the uh, letter. Yep, keeping it minimal, uh, maybe knowing okay. what he has to do. No, they, uh, they, I think he took two. Nah, they were just side by they, side. Yeah, yeah, they were stacked up in the deck. That's a VS Seeker. And that's a Guzma that he pulls off it. Yeah. Is he going after the Zoroark, or is he going to start continuing to target down the Combis? I think taking the knockout on Zoroark would probably be his, uh, his way to go here. Uh, just because it's two big prizes, it seems very worth it at that juncture. But I, I agree. I it, agree. You know, putting yourself ahead in the prizes is never really a bad thing. Unless he's trying to play around, making sure uh, he's got the four prizes that he needs. It is going to be the combi. And Sledgehammer doesn't need its damage buff to deal with this. He's got the Diancy to, uh, yeah. to give him the extra damage he needs to get there. Yeah, I mean, this is big now. Because now Sledgehammer, uh, he's kind of trying, I yeah. think, to I, leave. I, he's I, trying to get Jimmy to knock out his Buzzwall, the so baby one, so that then he can bring up the... The other Buzzwell, the one with the strong energy and the Diancy, will be powering up but, as well. I mean, his strategy will be to uh, um, uh, st uh, bust out the B-string, right? I mean, he's trying to put him at four prizes so he right. can uh, you know, do his magic dance. Yeah, he really wants that to happen sooner rather than later. Uh, so you've got to think Jimmy's going to play around that. Jimmy's going to try and look for that Landorus on the bench. Uh, but again, it, you know, it's forcing him to, to play a certain way, which may not be, be too suitable right now. Yeah, and James is playing this really smart because he's trying to use the one prize attackers to trade with him. And he's trying to kind of theory, how do I kind of keep putting myself in situations where I'm able to attack with one prize attackers and, and trade effectively. So the fact that he can use the Diancy damage output to use a sledgehammer to uh, take a knockout on a combi, you know, that's trading one for one, trading one for one. And that's Vespaquin's game, right? Right. I mean, he wants to hit you with a one prize attacker that's hitting for 200 and put you in a situation where you, know, you have to attack back with a two prize attacker to keep on pace. So, so James is doing a good job of, of playing this well. Yeah, I think James is... Uh, it's not his first rodeo. Definitely not. Definitely <laughs> not. It's his third time on stream this weekend. <laughs> He's, uh, like I said, he, he switched seats. Yes, so he, he committed to getting the W here. I mean, keep in mind, this is the win and in. I mean, the, the person that pulls this off gets to advance the top eight. Well, Jimmy does uh, Lysander up that that there uh, Landorus EX, and those four prizes have been skipped over pretty joyfully yeah. uh, as he takes that out with an energy yeah. drive. Uh, so he's not, yeah, he's not going to be able to sledgehammer, and, and you can tell that James is feeling a little bit of sorrow at the, this turn of events. The question is, will he Brooklyn for a Buzzwall GX and, and find some B-strings to really get after it now? Yeah, just absolutely pop off in a single turn. Right. Now, it's, it's hard because the Mew is still on the bench. Right. And, and you know, what he would want to do, even if he's able to get there, is probably try to target down the Combi again. So many options for, for what he wants to yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, at some level, I think it's... it's yeah, the, the B-string Buzzwell GX is not even necessary. If if he had put the other... Um, oh, you know what? It doesn't matter which baby Buzzwell he puts up because the Diancy gives him the numbers to knock out the Combi. Right. I, mean, I think the important thing he wants to do this turn is kill the Combi. That way Mew EX can never copy Vespaquin's attack 
And, you know, if, I mean, if he's stuck energy driving and riotous speeding, he's not going to get there. No, it's, uh, you know, particularly if something, something big comes out, uh, we are going to see energy attached to the baby buzz wall, maybe looking for a swing around later in the game. Has anyone been swinging around this weekend? How many, how, how uh, many you people know what? do you think have uh, gone Swing around's it? a bad attack. I don't think I've seen anyone use, uh, you know what, that's not true. I saw someone use, like, swing around with a choice band to kill a Zora Work GX. An easy thing, right? I mean, you, I, I think everybody assumes that, that, I mean, a three energy flippy attack kind of by its nature sounds like a horrible thing. But, you know, you know the fact of the matter is with B-String and a choice band, you can uh, really wreck some fighting weak Pokemon. And that's what this deck preys on, is uh, making sure the fighting yeah, weak. So he was available. not able to find the Guzma. So uh, you can tell James is, is having a moment of internal sorrow. You know, that was what he needed to keep the tempo. If if Jimmy gets a uh, a trades, Jimmy's able to get a Vespaquin down here. He could start to try to do a thing. Well, we'll see if he can get it there. I mean, there's so few cards left. Uh, he could just start tearing through what James has left with that. He is going to attach the energy to it, so probably a good indication that Vespaquin isn't far off. Now, an uh, important thing to talk about for a second here is I mean, if I'm keeping track of this correctly, it looks like another 70 damage knocks out the Zoroark GX, and another 100 damage knocks out the Tapu Lele. Um, if he discards one more Pokemon, that could put us in a situation where rescue he could stretcher. Carino, Rescue Stretcher, or Ikorio double knockout four price turn. That'd be big. That'd be a huge yeah. turn. So maybe getting that damage down with Sledgehammer, not so silly now. Yeah. It may actually be uh, yeah, putting important. putting two energies on that bench buzzwall means that buzzwall can retreat. Right. So all he would need is, you know, Karina and an energy, and, uh, and assuming his rescue stretcher is not prized. Yep, he's not relying on a float stone. Oh, and, and that Pokemon got discarded. He's at seventeen now. Is he counting the Pokemon? Yep. Yeah. Guys, this is a rare situation where I feel like. I almost knew what a good player was going to do in an obvious situation. So, this is uh, this is the commentating skills you were yep. looking for. Well, he's had a had a look. Rescue it's stretcher just in energy. The hand. Jimmy O'Brien uh, offers to shake. He says, "I'm good. Let's do yeah, this, guys." Moving swiftly on. Boom. That's James finally winning his stream round. Uh, he's been talking about it for a while. But the full prize turn, he's counted all the Pokemon in the discard. Just for clarification, would be throwing it down on the Zoroark and the Tapu Lele. And that will have got him the uh, win. The full prize turn is not a myth, Brent. Guys, the commentating team saw that coming. Well, you did. I mean, <laughs> this is like trainer chip Michael Slutsky right here. Commentating dream team. Me, Unbelievable. Me and Michael have similar hair. Huh? Yeah, a little bit of that. You know what? I kind of always wished I had hair like that. It's not going so well. It's no. not going so well. Are, are we going to try to get James Arnold on so we can talk about how yes, he's finally figured out how to win on stream? Let's finally talk to James. All uh, right. We will go and grab him. I'm sure they're packing up decks and things, but we'll be back very shortly to talk to James about his Oracorio deck. That yeah. He won and, that one with. And I recognize we're probably going to have a little bit of a break here because top eight is next. Yep. We this will. is. These are the moments that you've been watching this stream for the last 36 hours without changing channels to see. Top 8 is coming. Sounds good. Anyway, we'll be back very, very shortly to talk to James. The engineering team held it down.